Hi everyone, I am Dr. Rebecca Crawford. I am the C Campus Project Coordinator for Eastern Kentucky University. I just wanted to welcome you to one of our parent um, virtual trainings. So welcome! Um, and the, I hope you find these trainings to be super informative. Um, I've provided a lot of resources in the end in case you have additional um, questions you want to look into and also my contact information in case you would like to reach out to me. For my parents who are C Campus participants, please make sure that you complete the quiz afterwards. I will get notified that the quiz has been completed and then I will reach out to you as far as collecting your in-home educational kit. Um, everyone is welcome to take the quiz, but right now only our C Campus participants will receive the incentive of the in-home educational kit. Um, that quiz is password protected, so sometime throughout this training, I will um, sneak in the password, so make sure you are listening for it. Um, and that's it. I hope you enjoy this. And once again, my contact information will be at the end of the presentation if you'd like to reach out with any comments, questions, or concerns. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Eastern Kentucky University Virtual Parent Training. Today, we will be talking about how to take everyday events and turn them into learning opportunities. Specifically, we will be looking at um, everyday activities that we all do, so such as, you know, cooking in the kitchen, going on drives, going to the grocery store, um, doing laundry, and how you can take those and make them more engaging with your child. In addition, I will also be talking about specific skills and activities we can use to promote language and math skills in our children. And lastly, I will share some resources on additional activities that you might be interested in, as well as um, some resources on specific skills that you might want to work with with your child. All right, so just some general housekeeping items. Um, remember, there is a quiz associated with this training that you can take afterwards. That quiz is password protected, so sometime throughout this video, I will be sharing the password with you. Um, the link to the quiz is on the same website as you found this training, so the Burrier Child Development website. Um, it should be posted just directly beneath this video. And please remember, anyone can take the quiz. However, our C Campus participants are receiving a, a in-home educational kit um, as long as you complete one or more of the virtual parent trainings. Um, I will be emailing you once I get notified you've completed the training and we will set up a time for you to pick up your kit. Okay, so we will dive right in. Uh, like I said, today we are going to talk about how to take everyday events and turn them into learning opportunities. Our days are so much busier and simple tasks now take a whole lot more time to complete, especially with children. However, taking your kids with you to the grocery store and spending a little bit more time with them doesn't have to be a bad thing. It doesn't have to take away from all the learning activities you've been wanting to do at home. In fact, practicing language skills, math, creativity, practical life skills, gross motor skills, and a more natural environment within your um, real life routine is great for everyone. But how do you take those daily activities and make them learning moments? Today, we will be looking at, at um, six daily routines that we all do, and I'll be sharing some ideas on how to add in some learning experiences. So the first activity, hanging out in the kitchen, cooking, all of us do this. But most of the time we don't involve our children. However, children love to help you cook. I would advise that you start off with just having one child helper in the kitchen at a time um, until they learn master, until they begin to master certain skills or they've got the patience to wait. It's easier to start with one child at a time. Uh, cooking it together is a fantastic, fantastic way to do math, such as measuring, counting, fractions, you're studying real life chemistry, so you know yeast making things rise, and you can learn about different types of foods and the places they come from. So such as bananas and other fruits and vegetables, how they grow, perhaps that will spark a conversation about gardens. Uh, I would advise, once again, don't overcomplicate things. Keep it super simple. Include your children in a way that works for you, for the child, and for their stages of development. So for example, with a younger child, Maybe you're making a smoothie that day and you ask them to count out five strawberries to put in the smoothie. 
that is how they're going to help you. They can count. You can count with them. One, two, three, four, five. They place them in the blender and check. They finish their step for the day. Maybe for a child that's a little bit older and they have some gross motor skills already, but you want to strengthen those. Maybe they're going to whisk the brownie batter together in a bowl. While they're doing that, you could count um, how many times they whisk it or how long they're whisking it for. Maybe the task is simply finding the ingredients in your kitchen, you know, almost like playing I spy, but can you go find the eggs? Can you go find the milk? Giving them specific tasks to look for. Um, you know, this doesn't have to be a long time. It could be simply, you know, one or two minutes that they're hanging in the kitchen with you. It could be helping them, or it could be them helping you prep for dinner that night. So maybe they're counting the plates out or getting their napkins out or, you know, setting the table. So once again, keep it super simple in the kitchen. Children love it a whole lot more than you realize. It will get messy, but that's a part of the fun of it for sure. All right, doing laundry. Oh, you know, everyone's probably least favorite chore to, do, chore to do, but it's a great one to include your children on. A few simple things your child could do during laundry time is sorting by colors. Maybe you're sorting lights versus darks or whites versus blacks, or they need to pull out all the red items or all the green items. You know, that's pretty much it, limitless on what's how the sorting you want them to do. Maybe it's that you just want them to sort whose clothes they are. You know, for a younger child, it might be easier to say, you just need to sort out your clothes. Um, for our older children, maybe you're working on the lights versus darks. Uh, maybe you give them a certain number of items that need to go in each pile. You know, I need five shirts in here, or I need 10 pants in this pile. Um, Something fun to do with the laundry is try to make a game out of it. And I think we would all appreciate this. So maybe it is you are going to see how fast your child can collect all the laundry in your home and you use a timer or you're just counting and you know, that excitement of seeing how fast they are doing this skill um, is what's make it, make, what makes it exciting. Uh, another important skill, you know, it will take practice, but a great, you know, practical life skill for everyone is learning how to fold the clothes and fold the laundry. You know, for our younger friends, or your younger children, I definitely start out more simple. So maybe it's just they're sorting and matching their socks. Um, and then you can gradually increase as they've mastered that into, you know, folding underwear or shorts and pants. You know, maybe it's hanging up their shirts. Um, so laundry as a whole, yes, is a large task. But if you start thinking of ways that you can divide up those tasks um, and then add in the learning with it is that that's how you can make it a little bit more engaging for your child all right driving we're all driving maybe not driving as much right now due to corona but it is driving um and with your child in their car seat buckled in you literally have a captive audience so why not take advantage and talk about the things you see maybe you're going to talk about the trucks and the road signs for your older friends, maybe you're pointing out sight words that you might see or letters on um, restaurants as you pass them like, hey, Louie, look, there's an M. M is for McDonald's. Um, maybe you're going to point out the flowers. Maybe you're taking a scenic route and you see a farm. So you start talking about the animals on the farm. Then you can make the animal noises. Your older children, you might start spelling those animals. Um, it's definitely tempting. And I know that feeling to just hand over the iPhone or the iPad, um, just for the sake of the quietness and the entertainment. And definitely, I will say, I'm the first, I admit to be to doing those things. But we also want to take the time to let your child stare out the window, engage with the world around them, having those adult conversations, and um, seeing how much they want to talk to you. <clears throat> Um, another great tool if you know maybe for a longer trip is using like audiobooks or um, books on CD. This is something when I was working in the classroom, the children I worked with, they love to listen to books on CD. Uh, it gave them the opportunity to use their imagination to think of the story themselves. Uh, you know, then you can talk about it or maybe it's you stop the book halfway through and you say, what do you think will happen next? You can talk about the characters and the setting. Um, you know, this can lead into a whole conversation about, you know, making books and authors and illustrators and the whole publication system. 
Uh, a lot of local libraries are allowing you to access audiobooks right now, so definitely check that out. Um, some other things you can do is you could play a game of like see and say. So tell your toddler um, what you are seeing as you're driving. I see a green tree or I see a red truck and then open it up for them as well. What do you see? Something else you can do is sing alongs. Kids love to sing. So wheels on the bus is always, you know, always a hit with the kids, especially when you can add in the hand motions. Another fun one is the five little monkeys swinging in the tree. They always think that's fun. Um, and for your older children who are starting to understand like the rules of the road, so, so such as the red light, green light, yellow light, that's a great time to have the discussion of what do those mean? Or a stop sign, like what does it mean? What are you supposed to do at a stop sign? Um, as the weather changes, that's a, also a time that you can talk about, you know, that the road is icy or the wipers on the windshield are wiping now. Maybe you're passing a construction site, so you can talk about, um, you know, the big trucks, the dumpsters, the bulldozers, you know, what are they going to build there? You know, use your imagination as well. All right, the grocery store. You know, it is definitely easy just to stick your kid in the cart and, you know, check off your list as it goes, but definitely think of ways that you can include them. So maybe that is, you know, them labeling items as you pick them up off your list. So if you're in the produce and you're picking up apple and you can say, hey, look at this, what is this? And asking them to tell you, you know, maybe you want to be more specific on the colors. Like, hey, I got a red apple. Do you see all the green apples? Um, for your older friends and you know if you're comfortable with them kind of walking around this grocery store you know within your eyesight you could give them a, a small list of things to find so such as in the produce section maybe their job is to find um, carrots and cucumbers and peppers and they have to bring them back to you and then you can mark them off um, something else that's easy to do during the grocery store is to use all of our adjectives and talking about and describing the foods that you're picking up so you could, you know, in the cereal aisle, you can talk about how some boxes are bigger than others. Um, you can talk about the different colors you see. Uh, in the ice cream aisle, you might talk about a pint versus a gallon, you know, the same as in the milk. Uh, and then while you're checking out, you can talk through what the other customers are doing. So this is a great way to practice and inter introduce pronouns. So make statements as like, she is putting ice cream into her cart or he is talking on the phone. This also is a great time to, to, you know, talk about, you know, greeting others. So such as the clerk that's checking you out saying, you know, hello, thank you, please, you know, and using good manners. All right. Appointments. You know, it is super hard to take your child to appointments with you. I totally get it. Um, it's almost more stressful, I think, in the waiting area, waiting for them to be called or yourself to be called than the true appointment. So a few things you could do is, you know, talk about it beforehand. Prepare for the appointment ahead of time just by discussing what's going to happen, who they're going to see or who you're going to see, you know, what's going to happen, what expectations do you have of them, especially for your older children. So maybe this is an appointment for yourself. So the expectation is that once you're in the waiting room, um, and then once you've been, once you're back in your appointment room, you know, maybe their expectation is that they're going to read their book or color a picture, or, you know, maybe you've brought a few little Legos that they're going to play with. So just telling your child what to expect will help with any, any anxiety that they might have, as well as your own anxiety, you're preparing for it. Uh, once you're there, you know, you can point out you know, different people, the tools, the things that you see. So, you know, perhaps you're at the dentist, you're going to point out the toothbrush or the chair they're going to sit in or the x-ray machine. Um, you can point out the dentist versus the dental hygienist, you know, starting to use those terms. Yes, a lot of the times those are really large terms and big terms that your child hasn't heard before. And that's okay. We want to introduce them to these new terms. Um, so those experiences are the perfect time to do that. All right, going to restaurants. Once again, we may not be doing this a lot right now. And I know as a parent of a young child, we're not going to a lot of restaurants anyways, just because he's develop developmentally, he's not ready to sit and wait. But when your children are, this is a great time to have conversations, to talk about table manners, um, talking about you know, almost 
the customer service aspect of waitresses and being kind um, and cleaning up after themselves. A few specific things that you can do is look over the menu together and discuss the different food, foods. Describe what they look like, what their ingredients might be. You could even show your child the different categories. So such as like appetizers and entrees and seafood and desserts and drinks. And then talk about what kind of falls underneath each of those categories. Once again, introducing that new language to your child is super helpful. Um, for your older kids, you know, it might be ready that they start ordering for themselves, but I definitely understand it's so much easier to do it for them. But once again, this is another skill they need to learn. So practice saying a simple sentence like, I want blank, please, or even simpler, milk, please. So it will definitely depend on their current verbal skills. Um, but once again, it's a great practice for you all to start doing. And then you can always play games while you're waiting for the food. So you can use this time to interact, have fun, be creative. So maybe you build a power with, or power, build a tower with the sugar packets. Um, you could talk about the words like build and crash and fall. You know, you might even bring like a small bag of little Legos and you can build and be creative with that. Uh, maybe you're gonna play tic-tac-toe. Definitely for your older friends, they could play tic-tac-toe. Maybe for your younger children, you just bring you know, paper and markers and you all just draw a picture together. Maybe they're gonna work on sorting. So maybe they, you could sort, you know, the forks, spoons and knives on the table. Um, once you get your food, this is a great time to use those language skills again and start describing what they see. So what does the food look like? What does it taste like? Maybe use some of the terms of like creamy and tart and spicy, uh, salty, sweet, sour, savory. All right, going to the parks. And this is this one really could be for any sort of walk outside. Um, obviously, you could, um, you know, narrate what you're doing. So you can say, you know, we're going to walk across the bridge. Uh, for younger children, it's definitely really important to talk about what you are doing. That helps increase their verbal skills. So bringing up the words bridge or bike or um, nature, you know, once again, introducing some new words. Then you could, you could do a people watch or like, I spy, like I spy a bird, what do you spy? Maybe you're gonna do, I spy something green. Um, maybe you're gonna, maybe you're in a busy park and you're gonna talk about the people running. Maybe you wanna count how many people you see running every day. Maybe it just rained and so you're gonna talk about the puddles on the floor and you know how walking through the puddles, your, your shoes and socks might get wet. Um, you know, obviously nature is all around us. So using that to your benefit, I think the easiest way is definitely using I spy and you can include, you know, colors and shapes and sizes within the I spy game. Please remember that learning is everywhere. You can find opportunities for teaching everywhere, almost in any sort of weather. It does take, you know, some intentionality and some effort. Um, but be persistent and you're, you will find how enjoyable this really is. Um, children are super motivated to recognize numbers, for example. So er relate that to their daily experiences, such as identifying numbers on neighbors' apartment doors or examining prices at the grocery store. Once again, these things are super simple. Uh, it does take time to think about it beforehand or think, okay, when I'm going to the grocery store, we can do X, Y, and Z while we are there. Um, so once again, that intentionality, but once you start doing these things, you will find it almost becomes second nature to you all the time that you're like, wow, this is so easy. Like we're doing this all the time. And you start seeing that learning and that curiosity in your child spark and grow. All right. So the password for this presentation is learning L E A R N I N G. That is what you will enter into the quiz in order to access it. All right, so next we're gonna look at how to promote language skills. Um, the best way to do this is definitely by sparking conversations with your children. And I would do this based off what they're seeing and hearing, observing what they're interested in. So ask them questions like, where does milk come from? What fruits or vegetables are green or red? Maybe when you're unpacking your grocery, 
when you're on a walk around the neighborhood, you know, use this time to make up stories about the people who live in your houses or the apartment buildings. Like, how many kids do you think live there? Do you think they have any pets? What would the pets' names be? I wonder what they had for dinner last night. What do you think we should have for dinner last night? So really it's creating that back and forth conversation with your child. For younger children, you know, it won't be as much of a back and forth, but still engaging them, still asking those questions, and then perhaps you're answering them for themselves. So, you know, I wonder how many people live there? And you think, oh, I bet three people live there. Is that what you think? You know, so it's gonna be different and you will have to modify based off age, but really trying to work on having a true conversation is what you're wanting out of the language skills. Also, um, something I think we might forget about is simply reading with our children. You know, reading opens up so many doors. They learn so much vocabulary by doing this. So don't forget about it. Um, a few little tips, you know, first develop a family reading routine and ritual. So find a specific time of the day that you dedicate to story time. Maybe that's in the morning or before bed or before you're getting ready to school, you know, make it cozy, make it, you know, everyone's sitting in the chair together reading, but making sure it becomes something intentional that you're doing. Read books that interest your child. Um, so, and it doesn't even have to be books. Maybe they notice the nutrition facts on the back of the cereal box and they're like, what is this mom? We'll read it to them, tell them what it is. Um, maybe you're playing a new board game and they see the directions. Tell them, read the directions out loud. So it doesn't, you know, don't limit to what your reading is to just buy a physical book. It can be anything and anywhere. Uh, try books that reflect your daily experiences. So making connections to topics you read is a fun way to keep kids engaged. So for example, um, you can read, you can't take balloon into the Metatropolitan Museum with your child before you visit an art museum. This opens the opportunity to talk about, you know, what they might expect from our art, art museum or just a museum in general. Um, and you could discuss similarities and differences that you see. Or perhaps you're gonna read Dr. Seuss in a people house and then ask your child if they see any similar items on how they work or even create their own book based off what's inside your home. Let your child select your books. My son, he's only 18 months, but he still wants, he still prefers to select the books instead of me pick them out. So maybe when you're at the library, you let them pick out five books. Or even when you're at home, maybe you say, okay, for bedtime, you were gonna read three books. You pick out two and I'll pick out one. Uh, number five, it's okay to reread your children's favorites. They're going to have a favorite book that they really love and they'll want to read it over and over. And that's super common. Um, rereading familiar stories offers children a chance to absorb the information over time and then it lets them master the whole story. And soon you'll find that they will want to read the story to you. Uh, encouraging story time. So encourage your child encourage your child to tell you about a story from time to time or to retell a story that you've read several times. You know, the story doesn't have to be correct. It's more the enjoyment of the experience. Uh, number seven, have fun while, while learning. Uh, try whatever, you know, feels comfortable with you, but maybe it's acting out the stories or you're going to use funny voices or silly expressions or gestures or body movements or you know, for the story, Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed, maybe you all read read it once and then you use story props the next time. Or maybe you have your child act it out the, the next time. And then eight, change up the setting. This is something I think we all kind of get in a rut in of, okay, at bedtime, we're always going to read in bed or we're always going to read on the couch. But think about changing it up. So maybe you plan on going on a nature walk that day. So you could bring a book and read while you're outside. Um, maybe in the car, you know, like we discussed earlier, you're going to listen to an audio book together and you could talk about what happens next. So, you know, it's definitely easy to get, like I said, in that rut, but think about ways or places that you could read. That's a little bit unusual. That novel aspect will be super exciting to your child. All right. Next, we're going to look at how to promote math skills. Um, a lot of the times math does not sound like fun but it can be fun as you are, how engaged you are with it and how you can kind of embed it. So probably one of the easiest ways, especially for younger children to promote math is to work on building. 
um, building with blocks, so Legos or wooden blocks or Diplo blocks, whatever you have. Um, make sure you you use you talk about the like spatial relation terms so such as next to and above and under um, those terms often kind of get forgotten about and they're actually a lot harder to define especially for a child than you realize so the more that you can physically show how something goes above or below or under or to the side the more your child will start to understand that um, you know while you're building together you could ask your children your child how high can you build that stack of Legos? How many Legos do you need to stack to reach as high as the coffee table? Can you make a square or rectangle? Um, you know, talk about the other shapes that you might see. A few other things that you can do to promote math. You know, while you're baking, how many chocolate chips do you think it will take to fill one cup? How many for half a cup? You know, count those out together and then see how close you came to the right answer. You know, maybe you made a game out of it. Maybe you're preparing for a dinner party or simply setting the table. How many plates and napkins and forks do you need? If you're inviting 10 guests over a party and the plates come in um, packs of eight, then how many do we need? I'm measuring, counting, and recording. So maybe you're throwing the ball together and you ask, how far can you throw a ball? Take a guess, then throw the ball and you know measure the distance. Maybe you're gonna do jumping jacks and see how many can you do in a minute or how many times you can jump rope or bounce a ball without missing. Um, count and see. Maybe it's, you know, walking up and down the steps in your home or outside your apartment complex. You know, in the beginning, guess how many steps do you think there are? Then count them out. Then, it, you know, it can become a pattern or it can, if you're older children, you start to count by twos or fives or tens, um, you know, incorporating that skip counting. If you are interested in some other specific activities, so such as art or music or science or exploring the outdoors, I encourage you to use these links. They are embedded within this slideshow. Um, and this will give you some other additional activities and um, ways to promote skills within those areas. Lastly, these are the references that I use. So if you have any questions, you can refer back to these. Uh, our next steps are, you know, once again, if you're a C campus participant, you will follow the steps to complete the training. Uh, once I said once, or please remember once again, it is password protected. If you are not a C campus per participant, you can still take the quiz um, and it is still password protected. If you are interested in C campus and you'd like to learn a bit more, I'm sharing that here. So C campus is childcare access means parents and schools. Um, this is an opportunity for our student parents, full-time, part-time, or online, um, who need some childcare assistance. We can provide funding for that. We help to offset the cost of um, your childcare already. And our hope is that by doing this, you can finish your degree specifically here at EKU. Uh, these are the eligibility requirements and the program expectations. And then if you are interested, um, the application is embedded here at that link and you would need to submit your financial aid reward letter, class schedule and work schedule and then return it to the Center for Student Parents. Have any questions on this presentation or C campus specific questions, please reach out to me. I am Dr. Rebecca Crawford. I'm the project coordinator for early childhood programming and I am also the director of the Prairie Child Development Center here on campus. I've listed my phone number and email address. So if you need any anything or have any questions or suggestions, please, you know, shoot me an email, give me a phone call. But thank you so much for um, sitting in on this presentation and I hope that you were able to gain some things from it. Thank you. Goodbye.